Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamerica.com here, and today I've got a first look, review, sort of thingamajig at the new Commander. What this is, it basically it's buttons for your handlebars that will go ahead and control Zwift, but also other things like your bike computer. For example, if you have an Edge bike computer or a Wahoo Element uh, series bike computer, it can control the screens and set laps and all that kind of stuff. And then down the road, this could also work for really any app you want to, and I'll get to why in just a second. Now, this is really simple. You've got this little pod right here. Uh, there was no formal packaging yet. They just wanted to like start shipping now while the packaging comes in, which I get, small company, it, it kind of works. Uh, so in this case, you've got the pod right here. The pod has two buttons on it, and on the inside on the back there is a CR1632 battery. Um, they claim waterproofing up to officially IPX7, so that's one meter deep at 30 minutes, uh, but they said they've actually tested it quite a bit longer and up to five and a half meters deep, uh, which is substantial. I just took it and stuck it in a beer mug for a while. It seems to be fine. I've also taken it outside and I've sweated all over it for the last month and it hasn't died yet. So I'm, I'm pretty happy in that sense. Now this little pod connects to your handlebars using either a, a rubber band like this. You just simply pull it around and it's just like a, you've used rubber bands before. Uh, or you could use one of the mounts. So a small bar mount for TT bars uh, or a uh, handlebar mount for larger bars. These of course are the 3D printed prototypes. You'll have prettier ones yourself, but has a screw of course to lock it on your handlebars. So it's pretty darn secure right there. Once you've got that, I've got this little thing I printed out. This is just the manual. Uh, I have this so I can remember all the commands. Uh, but for this, we're going to jump over to the bike and just get straight into it. However, before we get straight into it, two things. One, you'll notice on the side, there is a little expansion ports right there. Uh, this allows you to go ahead and expand it out down the road. So the idea being that you take these doohickeys, uh, this right there, and then plug it into another unit, and you can expand it out with more buttons and more functionality as they expand that down the road. Uh, and they also really want to allow the hobbyist, DIY, geek, uh, whatever you want to call it, community uh, to expand upon us. So we've got the entire section on their website there where you can go and take this and kind of make it your own if you want to. Uh, notable number one is this only works right now with a Mac or PC uh, based Zwift installation. And that's purely because Zwift does not support Bluetooth keyboards in Apple TV or uh, any of the other mobile or tablet implementations. So that's a limitation there. Uh, and number two, if you're finding this video interesting or useful, simply whack that like button right now because it really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Okay, so here we are on the bike and I've got two sets of commanders. This left one right here I'm going to use to show you Zwift integration and this right one I'm going to use to show you the edge integration uh, or a bike computer integration. So the first thing we do is to go ahead and pair up the commander to my machine. In this case it's just a Windows machine. So I'm going to click on Bluetooth and press this button right here to wake it up. And we'll wait for a second for it to show up. There we go, S commander. And then it'll simply pair and we're done. It is really as simple as that. Now you see it in the list right there, listed as a keyboard, as commander, and connected. So now we'll go ahead and start Zwift up. Okay, now here in the sensors menu, nothing is different. Simply pair up your sensors just like normal because none of this changes. Click OK, and now we're gonna go and just go right into a normal ride. Uh, certainly not gonna choose Richmond, use Watopia there. There we go, and that'll work just fine. Okay, and now we are pedaling along just like normal. Now what I've done is I've taken the manual and I just have it on my desk right there and it's kind of hard to see it's blown out a bit, uh, but basically just showing me the different buttons so I can remember them, uh, cause I'm still just, you know, just haven't quite memorized everything yet. Uh, so we're in free ride mode right now. Uh, so that means that we can go ahead and do a long hold to change the camera view. So just do that right now. There we go, it was zoomed in, do it again. Now it becomes my view, do it again, hold again. And again, and again, and it goes through all the different uh, camera options right there. I can use the right button, double tap it to turn around. Oh, there it goes. Get out of the drone view real quick. Hold on again, long hold. And get down one more time. There we go. Now we can use the right button on this side right here uh, to go ahead and turn around by double tapping it. So I'll do that. And there we go, turned around just fine. Uh, and now we've got to find ourselves a turn so I can use a navigation left and right. Let's go do that. I'll fast forward till we get there. Okay, so you can see there's the options right there uh, to turn off to right. If I press left now, it'll go ahead and expand it out. I can change to right if I want to, back to left, back to right. Got to decide pretty quick here, back to left, and we'll go with this one off to Ocean Boulevard and it churns. It's really as simple as that. Now I've got self a power up you can see up there. 
So to use that, I just double tap the left button and it starts using it. It's that simple. And that is a sum total of all the options right now within the regular mode or the group riding mode or the race mode. Obviously no navigation in the race mode, uh, but you can see those core options right there. Let's switch over to workout mode now. Okay, we're into the workout mode. I'm gonna choose Emily short mix just for fun. There we go. Choose ride. We're in New York this time. Okay, we'll get pedal in here. Uh, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simply go right into using the skip workout segment option. So you can see right now I've got uh, roughly three minutes left in the segment, but I'm gonna say, no thanks, I wanna skip it. So I'm gonna do that by pressing long hold on the right button. So let's do that like this. And boom, now I'm into the next segment. Now you can see on the left hand side there, it shows me three minutes at 245 watts at 100% intensity. So to go ahead and change that, I'm gonna first increase the power by short pressing the right button. Oh, that was a left button, sorry, missed. Uh, short pressing the right button, the increase 100%, 101, 102. It takes about a second, a little under a second to respond. And I can decrease it by the left button right here. There we go. And I still have a camera view, so I can still go ahead and long hold the uh, left button right there. You can see it changes the camera view. Just like that. And I can also long hold the right button to skip this workout segment and go right into that next one right there. And then I can still do a turnaround uh, in workout mode by double pressing the right button. There we go. And that is workout mode for you. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and look at the uh, head unit integration. In this case, I'm just using a Garmin device. Uh, virtually all the Garmin devices in the last forever support this, uh, from an edge standpoint anyways. And I'm gonna use this right commander, and the reason is that once it's paired on Bluetooth, this left one over here, it'll maintain that Bluetooth connection until the computer lets it go. So right now, the computer's holding onto this one, but this one over here is a freebie, it's a free agent. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, swipe down and go into sensors. I'm gonna add sensor and I'm gonna choose search all for now, uh, which is fine. I'm gonna wake up a sensor. I press this a few times and let it wake up. I'm going to choose show more, show more again, and it'll eventually show up here in this list of sensors. Now we got this uh, right there, Shimano DI2, it showed up down there. I'll choose this and I'll select add. Uh, I can choose to add the custom data to support the sensor, meaning it's gonna add gearing data. In this case, I'm gonna say no to that though, because of the fact that it's not DI2 gearing, it's just using that just like DI2 buttons. Uh, so I can crack this open. Uh, I can rename this if I wanted to, to be Commander, for example. There we go. And then in just a second, if I press it again, it should go ahead and wake this up. Connect up. Okay, and now it's gonna ask me to see Commander found. Would I like to set up the DI2 buttons? I will choose yes. And you can see it's basically got four different buttons it's found here. Uh, so this is the first two buttons, switch A, uh, both left and right. And then beyond these for the left switch, and the TT switch, X and Y, these are if it was using the extension ports that are on the side, you can just barely see them uh, right there, those little extension dots right there. So I don't have those plugged in, so we're not gonna use those. But we'll go to the left road shifter and you can see each of the options right here. So each of these buttons then has three options within it. Uh, so single press could be previous page, but I can go into that and I say edge remote and you can see all the options right there to change. So I'm actually gonna go back and say, this is gonna be my lap button. So record a lap. And then for the second command on this one, I'm gonna say it's gonna be to show the map. There we go. And then for this one right here, I'm going to say, let's um, show the elevation profile, okay? So now we got for this left button here, a single press is record lap, press and hold will show the map, and a double press will go ahead and show the elevation profile. And I can do the same thing for the right button if I wanted to. We'll just leave that though as next page, uh, and this one here will change to something kind of obvious. Uh, we'll call start timer, and this one here we'll call stop timer. Uh, so again, single press will change a page, uh, press and hold will start the timer, and double press will stop the timer. So with all that set, we'll go back here into the menus and we'll just simply start it up just like this. Uh, so remember, it should be a uh, long press here, I think. We'll go ahead and start the timer. There we go, got that. Uh, and I can press once to change a data page. There we go, you just see it iterates through these. I can go to previous and next and so on if I wanted to. And on this side here, we could do a lap by just a single press and then a long press, I believe I've set to the map. 
There we go, set to the map. And then a double tap uh, should go to the elevation profile. And then over here, I believe a double tap went to stop. Oh, I actually remembered all this, holy cow. And that's that. And you can customize this however you want. And again, it varies by the head unit, but it's as simple as that. And of course you can use the same unit for one bike. Like you don't have to have two units. I'm just demonstrating this quickly with two units. The way it works is that once it falls out of range of your computer, it's gonna go ahead and uh, be available for AMP Plus when you turn it on. So first it looks for the computer when you turn it on, and then and after that, it'll look for AMP Plus. Okay, so with all the bike stuff working well, I've been using it, as I said, for about a month now, and it's like fine. I'm, I'm happy with it. It works exactly what I want to do. I really can't wait though for that mobile app to come along to be able to customize those commands. And that's what they want to do is be able to make it so that you can make these commands whatever you want. As opposed to being just the ones in that little sheet right now, you can customize them to any of the support of Zwift commands or even beyond that into any app. So you can do train road commands or RGT commands or Ruby commands or whatever it is, whatever app you want, because it's just a keyboard. Under the covers, this is just a Bluetooth keyboard following all the normal Bluetooth keyboard specs, which means that if Zwift wanted to, they could easily enable Bluetooth keyboards in Zwift and this would work as well. It's as simple as that. Now for pricing, this is 109 bucks, which is fairly steep. I would definitely grant you that. Uh, they say it's because it's small quantities and until they can get volume up, they don't have to kind of charge that sort of price. They are offering a 20% off early adopter sort of thing. Uh, so the code right now is early adopter. Doesn't benefit me at all. It's just their blanket code for early adopters. Uh, so 20% off that. I have no idea how long that's gonna last. It could last like a day or a month or, I have no idea, it's between you and them, I guess. Uh, but that's there. Uh, so that brings it down to 87 bucks. Shipping, uh, I don't know in the US what the shipping was, but to ship it over here, it'd be $9, which is astoundingly reasonable. I feel like you can't get a postcard shipped across the pond for that cheap. I live in the Netherlands, by the way. So across the ocean shipping is, is reasonable to me. I'd say the only downsides about this right now is that you're limited to just the Zwift keyboard commands, meaning you can't go beyond that and do something creative. They could, they could absolutely do that if Zwift wanted to partner with them or if a third party wanted to partner of them, uh, you could certainly do that. There's nothing stopping them from doing that sort of more direct kind of integration with those platforms and hopefully we'll see that. So that would really like open up the, the thing to really anything you wanted to. Uh, the cool part about this though is that you're not limited by their platform. Again, this just emulates a keyboard. So if Titan Labs goes under as a company, doesn't matter. Zwift support will always be there because Zwift can't get rid of keyboards. Obviously they're not gonna ever do that. That's kind of pointless. So that'll continue to work. They could change the keyboard commands, but let's be honest, they're not gonna do that either. The other cool part, it's not a Kickstarter. It ships immediately. It's not like one of those things you have to wait next nine months and hope it happens and doesn't happen and all that kind of stuff. Uh, never mind, we'll leave those pedals over there for now. Anyways, if you found this video interesting, go ahead and like that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one.